Hi, and welcome to the video focusing on the patterns in the digits of decimals and looking at which patterns are in fact irrational and which patterns are in fact rational. So there are different types of patterns in decimals. Some of those patterns are rational, right? And some of them are irrational. Um, and this is something I think is that's often confused because we we define these things at, a, at, a, at an early at an early point, I think, in in school, and and tell students what the difference is between a rational and an irrational decimal. And we use this word patterns, and then what happens is students say, "Oh, well, if there is a decimal and it has a pattern, it must be rational." But that's not entirely true. For example, the number one, or let's say point one, two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and so forth. This clearly has a pattern, right? The decimal is going on, and the pattern is the digits are counting up like counting numbers, right? We have 1, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so forth. But this is, in fact, an irrational decimal. And then and we can go on, right? For example, if I had another number like... 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and so forth. Well, this decimal and these digits are, are also exhibiting a pattern, right? Here, we have even numbers, or you can say the numbers, the digits themselves are, are going up by 2, right? These pairs right here. Of course, this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 4, but you can see a pattern. Even pi has lots of patterns in it. If you've ever had the, a f the fun experience of looking through pi, you can find all kinds of things. You can find your phone number, right? You could find um, your birthday. You could find, well, you could find lots of different things. Because here's an infinite sequence of digits, right? And in those digits, you can find all kinds of patterns and sequences and other common, right, irrational numbers also exhibit other patterns as well. But it's not the pattern itself that makes a number rational or irrational. Rational numbers have repeating patterns, and that's the key difference, right? A rational decimal, the digits have some kind of repeating pattern, and that makes them rational. Here's what I mean. Let's say we have point one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and this keeps going, right? You would see this written as 0.123 with a line over the vinculum there saying that these three digits are repeating over and over and over again. That means it's rational. Why? Well, because a rational number can be turned into a fraction. And there is a way of taking a repeating an infinite chunk of digits and turning it into a fraction. In fact, it's quite simple. I'll go into the details of it in another video. But here, I'm just going to remind you that there is a way of doing it. Here's how we do it. Well, since there are three digits in our repeating pattern here, I put three nines in my denominator. And then in the numerator, all I need to do is put the digits themselves that are repeating. And this simple fraction, right, a rational number can be written as a fraction, this fraction is equal to this decimal. I'm not saying it's reduced, but I am saying that if you plug this into the calculator, and what you can do if, if you want to try and and you can just plug this in. You take 1, 2, 3, and divide it by 999, nine, nine, and you'll get this number. Here, let's try it. I have a little calculator right here. 1, 2, 3, divided by 999. Nine, nine. And that equals 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And this calculator, it runs off there, but it would keep going. And in fact, it's quite easy to do this for any repeating pattern. Um, let's say I had 0.45. 1, 1, 2, 4, 5, 1, 1, 2, and this keeps going, right? Well, here, my repeating pattern has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 digits, so I put 5 9s down here. And in the numerator, I put the digits themselves that are repeating. Well, here, right, this is a fraction, and this fraction is a simple fraction. It's one, one integer over another, just like it is over here, right? one integer over, the, over another, and that equals this decimal, so this decimal is also rational. And the goal 
here is to recognize that, oh, it has a repeating pattern, so then it's rational. But the problem is, with these decimals over here, we can't use that technique to write it into a fraction. Part of, uh, part of the strategy here in, in, in converting these decimals to fractions, the rational decimals, is to find the repeating chunk. And here say, oh, well, well you write that many nines in the denominator. So if the chunk has, has five repeating digits, we put five nines, right? But here, this never repeats. It goes on forever and ever, right? So what am I going to even put in the fraction, right? I can't just put an infinite sequence of nines down here, right? And what am I going to put in the numerator? All the digits as they repeat in the pattern? What kind of a fraction would that be? Well, it certainly would not be a simple fraction. So this decimal, right, is not rational. It can't be turned into a fraction. And um, for similar reasons, right, and this is just procedural, I'm not really getting into it that deep here, but, but with pi and square root of 2 and all these other numbers, e and, and any other decimal with a pattern that's not repeating, can't be turned into a, a fraction. Our technique for doing it doesn't work. Now, hopefully in other videos we'll, we'll talk about this a lot more, about some of the deeper meanings of what's happening, other than saying, oh, well, there's no technique for turning it into a fraction. But here I want you to recognize at least some of the underlying principles that, that there is no way of turning a, these patterns over here into, into fractions. You need a repeating pattern. All right, thanks.